In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by viewers and listeners just like you. Welcome. Now, now we do that at the back half of the episode. So after about 38 minutes, we get into answering the questions. Now, the first 38 minutes, we do our introductory portion. This is where we uh, talk about current events. We talk about studies. We have some fun conversation. Okay, so if you like to be a little entertained, hmm. tune in to the whole episode. If you just want the fitness stuff. If you don't like fun, you fast can, forward. You fast forward to the past the 38 mark, and then we'll answer the fitness stuff. So I'm going to give you a breakdown of the whole episode, okay? So we start out by talking about Toilet etiquette. Uh, apparently, I am terrible with it, according to, definitely according to Adam. He yeah. says I'm not good with it. Then we talk about sports ball. <laughs> Justin and Adam talk about the Astros. Uh, they're Houston, mm. right? Yes. Oh, yes, I got that one. Yeah. Then we talk about the favorite ways that we like to work out when time is limited. This morning, I had an hour scheduled to work out, but uh, unforeseen circumstances turned that into 20 minutes. So you can hear about how I turned a 20-minute workout into an effective workout. Then we talk about uh, pre-workout supplements, and we talk about Legion's stimulant-free pulse. So Legion makes regular pulse, which has the caffeine and all the other stuff, the beta alanine, alpha GPC, the theanine. Uh, but they also make one that's stimulant-free. So those of you who are avoiding caffeine, people with hormone imbalance issues, people sensitive to caffeine, uh, stimulant-free pulse actually works. It actually gives you a little bit of a buzz without the stimulant. Um, now, Legion is a company that we're sponsored by, so we do have a hookup for you. Here's what you do. Go to buylegion.com. That's B-Y-L-E-G-I-O-N.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump. Either get 20% off your first order, or if you're a returning customer, you get double rewards points. Then we talked about the muscle gain hard gainer webinar that we have coming out. Uh, in uh, not that long. I think it's like a ne next week. Yeah, like Monday. This is where I talk all about how to train your body if it's stubborn, if it doesn't want to build muscle. Male, female, doesn't matter. I cover all of it. You can sign up at hardgainerwebinar.com. And then we talk about the UK's new ban on junk food advertising before 9 p.m. We had a nice debate. Very interesting. In that part of the episode. Then we got into answering the questions. Here was the first one. This person wants to know if they should change their lifting tempo every time they move into a new exercise phase. The next question, this person wants to know if they should do cardio before or after weights. The third question, this person's bulking. They want to know if they should worry about vegetables or if they should focus mainly on the calories, the meat and the potatoes, for example. And the final question, this person wants to know what our best traits were that made us, what we think made us successful trainers. We talk about all about personal training and what we think makes a trainer successful. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Also, 48 hours left for our flash sale. This one ends Friday night. Sorry. Not me flash. Thanks, Doug. Yeah. Also, 24 hours left for our flash sale. So here's what we did. Uh, with our core maps workout programs, we included an at home workout mod. Okay. So if all you have are dumbbells, you can now do all of our core maps workout programs. No barbell needed, no gym access needed, just dumbbells, but it still has all that other stuff in there as well. So if you want to go to the gym and use all that equipment, you can too. It just has a mod in there. So nobody's excluded. Everybody with dumbbells now can follow every single program. Here's the ones that we've included with this mod, and that now is 50% off for the next 24 hours. MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Split, and MAPS Hit. Okay, All those programs, 50% off with a new at-home workout mod included for free. By the way, if you already have those programs, you get the mods anyway. It's there. We're generous. Here's how you get the 50% off. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. That's M-A-P-S Fitness products.com. Don't want to have to spell the whole thing. And then use this code for 50% off at home 50. That's a T H O M E five zero. No space for the discount. So I got to tell you guys something that's kind of funny. Kind of. Ooh. Well, I mean, I, so I should preface this. The reason why this is funny is because it's never happened. 10 years. Katrina and I have been together. You farted. No. <gasps> No, oh, that's oh, the, that was gonna be a breakthrough. I know. I'm like waiting with, for that. That still yeah. hasn't happened. Okay. I bet there's a lot of people that don't believe that. That's true. 
Uh, yeah, he lets it all. He out just on yeah, us. he rips them all on us. Yeah. Easy, yeah. easy, guys. Uh, she listens to the podcast big time. Yeah. We don't yeah. put it on the mic. It's like a work. trumpet. It's yeah, like, yeah. easy, yeah. easy. Yeah. Sometimes, it's <laughs> so. Sometimes it's <laughs> So uh, what, <laughs> what what brought this up actually? I, I don't remember who I was talking to. If it was an interview or just someone that was talking and asking me questions about um, Katrina and I's relationship and the last time that like her and I got into it or whatever. And I'm like, you know, I, there's nothing that really comes to mind. And that's not to say that we don't have our disagreements. And I was and I was like, although there, I just recently in this last week, I did I did get like the the scolding or the look and I, I don't read that I, I've seen I can count on one hand how many times like she's been this upset or whatever at me and the other night uh and I don't know why this happened because I don't do this I'm not somebody who does this but it just so happened to be it might have been because of getting up in the middle of the night with Max or whatever but you know it was one of those nights where he was having a rough time sleeping and, and he was going you know Katrina and I were going back and forth taking turns to to go you know put him back down so we both are like semi awake, I guess, you know, uh, it's like three in the morning or whatever. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm laying there and I went the last time. So she's getting up to go, to go soothe him and she puts him down. And so I'm, I'm laying there and I, I hear her come back in, but I'm like half asleep and I hear her make her way into the restroom. And all of a sudden I hear this son of a bitch. <laughs> You left the seat up? I left the seat up and she, <laughs> she fell she in. She fell into no. the toilet. <laughs> wow. Oh, no. Wow. And she came out. The perfect she's track like, record. Is oh, over. my. Well, that's what I think. The only reason why that would happen, I'm sure there, there's, uh, there's guys out there that are notorious for leaving up. I never do that. And I don't know how, why or how, or maybe I was like sleepwalking. Even when I do it, get up in the middle of the night, I'm always really good about that. And you guys know, I openly admit about in the middle of the night when I pee, I sit down. So I don't know how this happened. I don't know why that makes it's you very laugh. very courageous of you. I don't <laughs> admit that. You, yeah. It makes you guys laugh. I don't, I don't know why that makes you I just picture you. You know why? I, I just picture you half asleep with your, yeah. with your hand. You know, you ever watch a little kid? Like, just tucking it Yeah, down. Tuck, holding yeah, like, it down like, yeah. uh. Yeah. <laughs> with just the shirt on <laughs> i sleep naked so there's no shirt on no, i shirt. thought you said you just wear a shirt no 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 that's what i'm walking around the house yeah. and you just put a hold yeah. on a second <laughs> yeah. you get up naked and you decide to put a shirt on no when i'm walking around the house before <laughs> is it long is it like a dry? no no, yeah, no, no 90 no no, no no it's just the right length you know what i'm saying so when i lift uh, my arms up right so <laughs> oh uh, Surprise! Yeah. Whoa! Hey. hey, you know what? So you know when we go uh, up to to Tahoe and it's just us and we're working, mm -hmm. so it's just guys, right? Mm -hmm. I do. I'm not gonna lie. I do like leaving the toilet seat up. I like that we all do that and no, it's okay. We don't put we. You do that. <laughs> okay, that is a you thing. Okay, that's fine. Nobody cares when it's just us. Of course. Wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. Back up here. There's you want three... me to put the seat down? No, no, no. There's three other guys here. Why don't you ask if they care? I am. Oh. I'm asking you guys. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't care. care. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, ca just I care. care. Oh, yeah, I team. care, and I care that you yeah. shit in the the the, the bathroom. That <laughs> well, that is, I care about. Now that is, I'm sorry. That yeah, that's yeah. A ridiculous rule. Yeah, that, I, I, that's not a ridiculous. That is an assault. Sal looks at that as oppressive. That's <laughs> an assault, assault shit. Yeah. on my liberty. We yeah. own the house, and you guys decided one of the bathrooms. Yeah. Cannot be pooped in. It's the public bathroom. It's, no, it's because it's right in the living room. It's right, like, you know, we're listen, sitting there. We don't listen, need the. Fuse. I'm not gonna walk hella far just because you guys <laughs> have decided like, this toilet is like decided. it's a quarter mile walk to the other bathroom. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know Go to your bedroom. You were might, there for the council. If, look, if I the can't council of poop, if I can't shit in every toilet, is it even my house? That's what I want to know. <laughs> you know what I mean? It feels like it's not. It's no. not. It's not a matter if you can. You can. Yeah. You're okay. right. That's okay. Right. Yeah, okay. you can. We're not telling you you can't. It's a courtesy. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah. yeah it's a, <laughs> we'll see how far I can push it. Yeah. I, you know what? I will say this. This is always, this is a thought that I've had over the toilet seat controversy. Jessica literally uh, wrote a, a, a note on the, on the, on the toilet to, you know. Remind not, you? Yeah. I love her. Yeah. She does. So, so here's, here's my thought, right? If, if you are the one about to go to the bathroom Who's respond? So you're about to go, right? Yeah. Where does the burden of responsibility fall on you, who's about to use the toilet? So you set it up like you want it, or is the burden on the other person who they took care of themselves? You see what I'm saying? The uh, burden is on the other person. The Why? Because it's how you leave it. Well, I mean, I understand the leaving it clean and that kind of stuff. Yeah, see, I don't feel like but you're that guy either. I feel like you're the guy who it. pisses all over the seat and then leaves it no, up. No, 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 no. <laughs> yes, I'm talking about preparing it. It's almost like, you know what I mean? It's it's It feels oppressive, mm. if you ask me. It's I like, you're the one that wants to sit down. Yeah. 
I don't handle we'll, your own. We'll but have to that, take that a, being said, yeah. I put the seat down at home, so I lost yeah. that battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I could talk about it on the podcast. But, but yeah, as you say, but when we're all together with yeah. all the guys, I've, you feel I've, like I've waved my flag on that whole yeah. argument. Yeah, yeah, it's I don't even care. Whatever, put yeah. it down. So, are you the same way? Does that was that a thing that you needed to be trained on too? I Justin? did have to get trained a bit. Well, just because of my oh, old tendencies of being uh, around, because I lived with a lot of just guys. Yeah, I was gonna say you're you yeah. have fraternity and exactly. football, and then you also grew up with a brother. See, yes. I grew up in a, a house dominated by women, yeah. so I, there was it makes more. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <it's just. laughs> so I was I was trained at an early age that it's just like a respect thing for them, yeah. right? So yeah. I was and I was out. I've come around over the years. I was but, outnumbered yeah. as a kid, so I you know I was like I get it. You know, I'll tell you another another point of disagreement between Jessica and I that she won because I just I gave in. I threw the talent. The the direction that the toilet paper sits on the oh, on that, the roll that's important to people. Okay, whatever. Yeah. So here's here's her point of view. Here's my point of view. Okay, she thinks that the toilet roll the paper should be facing out out. Yeah, yeah. right. Rolls out. rolls out. Which that's the default. I I understand. That's the way it's supposed to be. However, okay. you're gonna learn this soon, my friend Adam. When you have children yeah, in the house, hit yeah. they hit it down, and that's it's going to happen. You're going to get a toilet paper floor or potentially flooded toilet. So I can see. So you flip it because then they do this, and it just spins, and no toilet. Paper I feel down. like that was your defense mm. with Jessica, but it's bullshit. That was just you making an excuse. Just forgetting? Yes. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yes, it was. I had two kids. No, don't give me that bullshit. My dude, my my son and my daughter both did that. Why we'd go in the bathroom and they'd be like, "Oh, oh this is nice." And you it's con- the most egregious use of toilet paper. My oh, son just used all of it. I'm like, "No, yeah, we got to stop using so much." They so just spin I, it down. So I, you better be honest here. You know, okay. so you consciously make an effort to turn it the opposite way. I did. I used to. I I was actually. I, I and feel I, like you're lying. Right I swear now. on everything. Mm. I swore on everything. Yeah. And, and, the re- and it was. I just roll the dice. You're the guy who Whatever doesn't. Comes out. You don't t- put the fucking toilet seat down, which is 10 times easier. But when you put a roll on, you make the effort to turn it backwards. Well, no. What happened was when my kids were, were little and that lies, happened. Lies, Doug. You, 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 tell me, you tell me <laughs> you see the lies, Doug. The yeah, I, I see it. Doug, I see it. Doug is no, looking at me right now it. with this grin on his face. Like, he is full of shit. Listen, we know you so well. Listen, a, a very. A, a, our partnerships are based off trust. Uh, <laughs> no, so listen. Remember that. When, I had, when my kids did that a couple times, I, that's it. I flipped them all, and then it became so automatic. I didn't think about it anymore. Now we don't have little kids in the house anymore. Now Jessica's pregnant. We're about to have a baby, which I don't need to worry until the baby can run around and all that stuff. But it was just automatic to put it that way because my kid, literally, uh, at least five times. You, trust me, you're going to see this. You're going to go in the bathroom, and the whole floor is going to be toilet paper, or the toilet will be filled because they go like this, and they realize that. And because once you get momentum going, that's fun. <laughs> it just spins down, yeah. so you yeah. got to flip it's it. You got to, or put it up high so they can't reach it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that that could become a problem. All right, too. let's let's talk about fitness. I feel like I'm getting a uh... <laughs> <laughs> you getting cornered. Oh, give me yeah, Jessica yeah, more, work your way more out ammunition yeah, against yeah. me. I'm yeah. on. I'm Team Jessica on this one for uh, sure. Thanks, uh, you fuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't need any uh, more ammunition. Oh, I brought up uh, the other day about baseball, and you know, and like how they're having this whole like they just started again, and everything. So I'm I was curious as to the Astros because remember their whole thing about cheating uh, you, you know and like yeah. how they were going to oh, head hunt and stuff yeah I remember you guys telling me about so that so this was like their first game and I guess like um, uh, what's the the uh, Joe Kelly Joe Kelly yeah. from yeah from the Dodgers yeah it's like right I know who it is on yeah, the yeah. notes yeah, yeah. thanks Sal um, <laughs> He plays for the Houston. Already started Houston it. Houston yeah. already right? like headhunting and throwing, the, you know, balls that were going to beam batters and everything. Oh wow! Yes. So they carry. You gotta love that, dude. It's it's. I'm I'm like ooh. I'm, I actually might like watch those games like and see if it's this trend continues to, you know, if other teams are going to like punish them for you know cheating. Well, so, well, remember what they did. So I, I know a little bit about sports. Oh, Do you guys okay, remember what they? Yeah. I was like, wow, he's chiming in. They, yeah. Remember what they did? I don't know what the years were, but I remember it was you know Mark. McGuire, Jose Canseco, whatever, where baseball was getting really low ratings, yeah. and all of a sudden everybody started smashing home runs mm-hmm. and, on steroids. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. I feel like which was great. Yeah, I feel like they allowed that to happen to get ratings. Oh, 100 percent, they did. Do yeah. you think they're going to allow 
crazy stuff to happen again in order to get I, more ratings? I feel like it. Really? Yeah, why wouldn't they? Oh, I, it always is. They always kind of do that, right? Mm-hmm. Like that, that was definitely turning a blind eye to that. There was no, there's nobody that was tied into baseball closely that was, that thought Mark McGuire was not on steroids or Jose Canseco they, or uh, Sammy you, Sosa yeah. were not. You ever I mean, watch his, you ever they, see his before and after yeah, pictures? Yeah, I mean, it's like, <laughs> he had like muscles in his You don't eyebrows. need to be a <laughs> expert to yeah. be able to go like, hey, something looks really different here. You know, and then all of a sudden his home runs are double and triple. Goosh, just I mean, out of the park. Sosa hit one of his bats during that that home run race broke open, and there was a cork in it too. Oh, uh-huh. yeah, I, I so, didn't know that. Yeah, like so all he, levels. Yeah. And, yeah. And who was the one guy that played for the Giants? Everybody said he was an asshole. Barry Bonds. Yes, yeah. Barry Bonds. I saw a picture of him when he started, and then when he was crushing. Yeah, he's all skinny and stuff. Okay, his head grew too, though. Even his head Weird. grew. Now, from the body, Is that like HGH. Yes, you think? in the yeah. bodybuilding yeah. world, that's that's uh, human growth hormone. Okay, steroids yeah. don't make your skull grow. Yeah, <laughs> he fingers. looked he looked bigger just everywhere. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I look uh, at those pictures, yeah, no, it happened. Oh, crazy. I think that's a. I mean, <clears throat> here we go. We're gonna get into sports conspiracies, right? Yeah. So yeah. you guys, yeah. you guys are just my, yeah. Ooh, I love it. No, I, it's I, in a different direction. I think there's a lot of things like that, stuff like that that just you just they just brush under the rug because it does. It gets it gets viewers paying attention to it and watching it. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see something very similar to that. Just a bunch of craziness. Yeah, yeah. There there was uh, there was conspiracies around. Uh, things that were happening with the balls, like uh, dehydrating them was uh, mm. making them fly further. And they found that out in Colorado. In fact, in Colorado, they had to put the balls in a humidifier. So they're not like that. There were so many home runs that oh, were wow. happening there. So uh, there's stuff like that that I think happens all the oh, time. Oh, totally. And, and, and I'm sure like every time they go to check uh, the pitcher uh, and they find all these different types of like, uh, you know, uh, like like kind of creams or like uh, uh, like gels and things that they're using for their hands to like manipulate the ball spin and yeah. all kinds Is of it like stuff. Vaseline, Vaseline and sandpaper and stuff like that. All that stuff. See, now this is the kind of stuff that would make me want to watch. Because I love the science of this kind of stuff. How you can make the ball move differently through different techniques and stuff like I that. I know you so well that I know that if you actually took the time to really dive into sports, you would love it. Mm-hmm. That you would have loved that. <laughs> it's your dream. So we got something. something to hang out. Yeah, so we can hang out and talk about <laughs> fucking sports. You got us into politics. It's time to get into sports. Yeah, man. I, I apologize for that. Yeah. By the way. Now you guys are uh, stressed yeah, out you, as I am. Yeah, I am. <laughs> all the time. Every hey, night. It reminds me of the, you know the science of this stuff. It reminds me. So do you guys remember we were in? I think it was. I want to say Austin. We were in Texas all together and we were at this bar and we were hanging out and they had one of those like circus punch machines do you remember that yeah, yeah. yeah it had dude. the big it had the big bag on it and you could punch it to see how hard you punched it yeah, oh, yeah. and you know justin of course he yeah. goes up to it and he blasts it and i don't remember what i the hit number that was. shit really hard yeah dude. i'm like what the fuck <laughs> no, hold on dude. a second yeah. he he hits a number i don't remember what it was it was yeah. pretty impressive was pathetic so i'm looking at the machine and i go over and i hit it and i top his number by a pretty decent amount yeah. and he was like he couldn't figure it out he's furious yeah so we went back and forth back and forth and i it, i i was doing something to make the increase little, little carnival trick uh, kid and, over here yeah <laughs> throwing yeah. Some, yeah not even throwing a real punch right i bet it was like some no like, he went no, like i was throwing a real he punch didn't down like a haymaker he's weirdly. just hitting it down because of uh the centrifugal what is that the physics of it like goes down yeah. it, it gains speed yeah on the <laughs> way up and afterwards i had to tell him because he was like i could tell he wasn't gonna sleep <laughs> that night, you know, I'm like, I was so the- angry because yeah. I was like, dude, I had way more snap in that punch. It didn't do shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. no way, Sal punches I, no way. I put Vaseline on the ball. <laughs> essentially, is what <laughs> oh, I did, gosh. dude. I this uh, this morning I worked out and just totally ran out of time. There was stuff going on. Didn't have a whole lot of time. So my hour workout turned into a twenty minute workout. And um, yeah, I wanted to share this on the show. My favorite way to send a muscle building signal that is effective in a very short period of time. Not effective all the time. This is a one every once in a while type of thing that you can do. But what I did, normally what I do in my workouts, today, here's what I was planning on doing. I was going to do five to six sets per body part. I was going to be around the eight to 10 rep range, uh, rest about uh, one and a half minutes in between sets, kind of a traditional you know workout. And I ended up with just 20 minutes. So instead of skipping the workout, what I did is I did one super intense uh, superset failure per body part. That's it. Oh, wow. So instead of doing six sets for chest, back, shoulders, you know, biceps, triceps, and legs, I did one for each of the them. The old hit it and quit it. Workout, yeah. Huh? So what I did was like I do. What I'll do is I'll do a single joint exercise to failure, immediately superseted by a compound movement 
to failure, but it's like intense. Mm. And you know, for the listeners, not a great way to work out all the time. It really loses its 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 effectiveness after a few workouts. But if you do it one off here and there, you actually uh, you don't lose any progress. In fact, sometimes you get a little spike in progress. Do you guys have any strategies like that? If you have like little time? Well, I told you that's, that's how I utilize like hit training. Oh, um, you know, we talk a lot about the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. And and I know that there was a, and I remember there was a time it was, I would say in the early two thousands when, when hit got really popular. When it was every, a hit. Yeah, it was a hit. Was a dad joke. Sorry. And I, I feel like, uh, all the trainers were training that way, including myself. That was like the new thing. Like studies came out and supported, oh, it's great for fat loss and building muscle. And so everybody was doing it like anything else, the body adapts. And then you see minimal to, to no results after you've been doing it for a while, but yet it's still a very useful tool. And that's where I find it the best versus following that as a protocol all the time or for extended period of time is use it when I don't have an option. Mm -hmm. You know, use it instead of like, hey, this is a day, you know, oh, I'm following HIT so because my friend told me or my trainer has got me following this HIT program and yet I have an hour to work out. Like, no, I got an hour to work out. I'm going to do a traditional lift. But like you today, those times happen frequently in my life where – I'm cut to just 20, 20 minutes. That's when you do your hit. And that's yeah. when I love to do the circuit uh, type of workouts or hit. Or that is when I like to just focus on one thing. So I might, and it just depends on what I what I think uh, is a you know, priority at that time for me or what maybe I haven't done most recently. So I might actually on a day like that, Sal, is squat for all 20 minutes. Yeah. And just do the most that's important I exercise. I either do uh -huh. squat or, yeah, or add like overhead press, either just two very... Uh, you know, effective exercises and just do multiple sets in a row. Mm -hmm. um, or, I mean, I, that's where actually I'll do barbell complexes, just similar to like the whole strategy for uh, circuit training, but like keeping it all confined to then uh, in one place. So I just like, if I'm trying to just go for like full on exhaustion mode, like I'll do something like that. Yeah. So I, so one of my, this one's a one you could try on your own. It's, it's nasty though, uh, is you either go leg extensions or sissy squats first do them to failure, really squeeze, get the quads to just light up. Immediately afterwards, go into a bar and squat Ooh. and watch what happens. But you got to be careful. Your your The squat weight needs to be way lower. Oh, yeah. I, I've made that mistake. The first <laughs> times I did this, I got under a bar thinking I was going to be okay and buried myself because yeah. <laughs> I was, you know, the muscles were already kind of pre fatigued. So that's what I did this morning. And, you know, you do it every once in a while. You'll actually not see a reduction in progress. No, and every all. once in a while, I see actually a little bit of a boost, but I don't let it get me too excited because in the past, I did this. And I noticed, again, I'm like, I'm going to do this all yeah, the time. Yeah, then you get stuck in it. Totally. After about a week, that's it. I don't, I don't get you know anything I mean, that's left a, over. I think the advice that I'm always giving uh, people is that I know that this happens because it still happens to me. I know very well uh, how to program. I know the the pitfalls of following that. Yet, it's so easy to gravitate to the things you either like or the things that have recently showed you results. Totally. And so I'm always challenging myself on that. Like, oh, you know, like this is what I want to do, but should I do that? You know, if I've been doing that for an extended period of time, one of the best things I can do is something different. And I, I think that's maybe one of the better lessons that I've ever learned in lifting is understanding that concept that you know, always kind of looking for that novel stimulus that, hey, I haven't trained this way in a really long time. It's a good time for me to do it. And the second part of that is once you find it and you feel the results, don't marry it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's where that's where I used to get myself screwed up all the time. Speaking of which, um, I wanted, you know, uh, my hat's off to Mike Matthews. He, you know, his, his one of his top selling products is Pulse. It's a, it's a pre-workout. So for the listeners don't know, it's a pre-workout supplement. It's got caffeine and theanine and beta alanine and you know uh, you know uh, alpha GPC and you know, compounds in there supposed to help you with you know focus and uh, muscle contractions maybe improve a little bit of stamina while you're working out but he has a stimulant free version that doesn't have any caffeine so the normal one you can take either half a dose which I believe is 175 milligrams of caffeine or full dose which is 350 pretty hefty dose of caffeine. I'm personally sensitive to caffeine, and I like to, to cycle it anyway because if I use it every other day, I get great results. If I use it every day, I tend to not feel super great. So, you know, obviously Legion is his company. They sponsor us. He sends us free stuff all the time. I've been trying his stimulant-free pre-workout. Now, in, my, in the past, I've said that pre-workouts, most, most of the value has to do with the stimulants. Uh, the rest of it, eh, I don't know if you're going to really – his stim-free pre-workout's not bad. 
It's not bad. Have you guys messed with it at all? The, the one without caffeine? Yeah, no, I have both. I have both, and it just depends yeah, on. I do the caffeine one, mm-hmm. just to be honest. So no, I do. Of course you do. <laughs> well, I do, so for me, I actually so I carry I carry both, and I like to have the caffeine one if I take it earlier in the day. If my workout is later in the afternoon, I do the stem free mm-hmm. one. I just I have found that especially a, a, a dose that's like three hundred milligrams of caffeine or more. If I do that much later than about two p.m. in the afternoon. The, the likelihood that I'm going to be able to rest at sure. night, I, I, I notice a huge difference. And I, I tell you what, for mm-hmm. years, I didn't really pay attention to this. And it wasn't until I, pro- I prioritized sleep. We just did a whole episode on sleep and the benefits of that. So this really is something that's come full circle for me in the last five to six years that I've really started to pay attention to is a lot of my behaviors early in the day, how it also affects how I get prepared for bed and sleep. And I've definitely isolated it down to one of the biggest offenders for me not being able to mm. sleep is having a high dose of caffeine later in the afternoon. And yeah, I so, got to cut off right at two. Yeah, uh, you do, huh? I mean, yeah, I've been going through that same sort of a, a, you know, figuring that out about my own body and my own self. Like, if at two, I, I, I my sleep quality increases substantially, mm. and uh, I've gone beyond that. Trust me, like a few, because you know, the morning I'm dragging and I'm just starting to kind of come to. And then uh, I just I have a propensity towards uh, caffeine drinks uh, as I'm doing things mm-hmm. and not even realizing that, oh, it's like three o'clock, it's four o'clock that carries with me uh, through the night and then I have restless nights. Well, it's and it's a, it's an interesting feeling that you get too because like someone like Justin and myself, we drink quite a bit of coffee and caffeine. It doesn't feel like so at, I could have a three o'clock, four o'clock, you know, 300 gram uh, dose of milligram, milligram, excuse me, 300 Jesus milligram. Right. Yeah, 300, <laughs> yeah, that'd be ridiculous. 300 milligram dose of caffeine and it not feel like I'm I'm raging or racing like crazy. It no, just kind of keeps me normal. normal. Right. It's when you try to go to sleep. But when I go to try to go to sleep, I, I just toss and turn and I wasn't connecting those dots for the longest time because the stimulant didn't make me feel super wired when it hit me. I didn't think that, oh, this was affecting me eight hours later when I'm trying to crash, but it absolutely has. I've teased it out enough times to see that if I make sure mm-hmm. I don't... And one of the best ways to do that is to keep both those on hand. So it's like, hey, if I'm going to be working out late in the afternoon and I do want a little bit of a boost, but I don't want something as strong as like 300 something milligrams of caffeine, I'll use the stem free. If it's earlier in the day, I like yep. the one. The with other caffeine. people that you know st- that want to avoid or should avoid stimulants are people who are dealing with hormone issues, especially women, or people whose bodies uh, seem to be overwhelmed uh, with stress. You know, if, if you're if you've identified that your body's just, it's just too much stress, too much stress on your body, you want to reap the benefits of exercise, but you got to be careful because exercise is also a stress. Throwing stimulants on top of that is like fire on uh, gasoline on a fire, and it makes things much worse. When I work with clients who are dealing with hormone issues or too much stress, one of the first things I do is I wean them slowly off caffeine because when the caffeine is in there, it's very difficult because it's just constantly telling the body to be amped or for the CNS to be you know stimulated. So. You know, you're giving props to to Mike. I want to sh- give props to you. I was uh, I had an opportunity to um, watch so I, uh, watch your webinar that uh, Eli is editing right now. Oh, cool! And it's really really good. It, God, it takes me back. Like listening to you talk about all the pitfalls of trying to gain muscle mm. as a young as a young boy and c- learning all the l- hard lessons. So I'm super excited for that. What day is that? Is are you going live with that? Yeah. When is that, Doug? When's the webinar? Go is it live? Monday? Uh, it is the third. So I believe that is Monday. Wait, okay. that's a th- the August? August 3rd. All right. We'll double check that. And then what is, sure. what's the link for the, the web? This is uh, obviously the listeners, if you don't know, it's free webinar, similar to like what we did for Prime and Prime Pro. Uh, register for it. Uh, if you make the times when it's live, uh, we're on there live mm-hmm. answering questions that, that people have. When, b- between the three of us, we, I think we do a pretty good job of getting everybody that's on there. It's so. all about how to build muscle if you are a, a hard gainer. If you're that person where, you know, it just, you struggle more with it than the average person. You find that your body doesn't respond super well. And you know what's funny about it is that, so we've already put it out um, on social media and talked about it, I think, one other time. We're getting a lot of uh, female uh, uh, applicants. People well, coming in who are women, and uh, you know, a lot of I think the fitness industry does a terrible job of talking to women who have trouble building muscle. Yeah, they don't. They don't. 
inform them. It's like non-existent. Yeah, they don't inform them at all, but there are a lot of women out there that are just as frustrated as guys when it comes to building muscle. Well, it's the stigma that's been around that forever. I mean, you guys know that. We know uh, taking clients on how many female clients that you would get, they'll be like, I don't want to get a bunch of big bulky muscle. I just want to tone and firm. So the idea of like, you know, a female being a hard gainer just sounds counterintuitive, but the truth is, you know, somebody who is trying to build a butt or shape their legs or sh- sculpt their shoulders or tone their arms. It's all building. It's all building muscle and it mm-hmm. all falls in that category. If you struggle with that as a female, you fall in that category, just like the young boy who's trying to build muscle right. himself. Yeah, it's interesting because you think about uh, before that, it was a lot of these runway models and everybody was, you know, looking up to these, you know, body types and, you know, trying, trying their best to stay thin and uh, nobody's really promoting like muscle and what it looks like and when you have like strength how that changes your body in a positive way and also creates shapes that are very ideal for women yeah it's uh it's it's funny because i i know the majority of the population is interested men and women are interested in fat loss right that's the number one target right but yeah. they the the male market that wants to build muscle has they, they have resources they do women don't have much you know, if you're a woman and you go online and you say, I'm a hard gainer, every article you're going to read or whatever, you it's clearly targeting uh, men. And so I don't know if it's a huge market, but it's definitely an under, mm. it's an underserved market. And I'm, I can tell by the response that this, uh, this hard gain. So that's what I do in this webinar. I really go through uh, training. I talk a little bit about diet and, and the things that hard gainers should do to get their body to respond and, and what makes a hard gainer a little bit different. Um, than the average person. And w- we need to know, is it hardgainerwebinar.com? Is that it, Doug? Yes. All right, hardgainerwebinar.com, and you can sign up and, and, and go check it out. Speaking of diet, one of you guys brought this up. I think it was yesterday, and I didn't get a chance to ask you because I, <clears throat> I didn't read the article, but I heard one of you guys say that the UK made a law around junk uh, food or yeah, something. Yeah, yes. What the hell is so that? So they passed a law. I'm going to look it up real quick just so I don't misrepresent it. But they passed a law surrounding uh, junk food. And, okay, they banned advertising junk food on TV before 9 p.m., so television now, there's no more commercials for anything that's junk food. So before. they're treating it like cigarettes, basically. Yeah, ap- apparently, right? And they're and then selling candy in checkout aisles will no longer be. I think they're going to regulate that. So huh. there's not going to be candy. So in what checkout. is what's your thoughts on this? Well, here's my thoughts. Hmm. What are they going to consider junk food? Like, what are the parameters and how are food companies going to maneuver around it? You know, is it sugar content? Because they can move around that. Well, let's is just it let's just per, let's just for 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 hmm. discussion argue, and argument sake, let's just pretend it's all the stuff that you do see in because that's common, right? We have that in our, our grocery stores. There's a when you're in line, oh, it yeah. is all gum, candy, and and like Snickers bars and stuff. The whole yeah, thing yeah, yeah. is all candy. If it's just that, like, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Well, um, you know me, man. I think people should <laughs> make their own choices. I really do, and I don't know if you can force people into eating healthy by taxing and banning uh, some foods over others. I also don't trust the people making those laws. So like, I'll give you a good example, right? Uh, we have our own food recommendations here in the US uh, where they, you know, they, they put out these nutritional guidelines to promote better health. They were heavily influenced by lobbies. And so as a result of that, they, you know, the recommendations were eat lots of grains. That's the super most important thing. And then you go up this food pyramid at the very yeah. top where- Whatever was subsidized yeah, and then it goes up. Yeah, where meats and fats. And now we know that that's totally false. Uh, it, it can be the opposite and still be very, very healthy. And, it, and, it, and, and if we judge it based off of the result- if we literally just look at what happened to the American population after all these guidelines came out, did it do anything? And there's zero evidence to show it did anything. It, people got fatter. People got sicker and less healthy. So, so I that, don't know. Yeah. So as I say, that was a whole lot of fluff for uh, no answer there. <laughs> I feel like I'm for it. I mean, I think this is I think this is a a step in the right direction. Okay, I do agree with You're a you. Food tyrant. Well, no. Here's the thing. <laughs> I, I, I don't think that it should be illegal. Uh, I I don't know if I it, I don't know if you read that it was heavily it's being heavily taxed or not I don't know if I no they they, they said no talks to that. about that but yeah it didn't happen okay yeah. so I'm, and I'm not for that either mm-hmm. but do I think making it more difficult for kids to be able to grab real quick and to purchase or to be advertised to at a certain time like 
Yeah, and, and I think your analogy, yeah. Justin's great. It's like cigarettes. I'm not against people being able to have the right to go buy cigarettes, but I'm also I like the idea of it not my my kid not being advertised to 24 yeah. seven when they're watching television or the the when we're all waiting in line and we're stuck there because someone's got a million items in front of well, you. Well, I think looking at the data of how successful maybe that approach has been with cigarettes and you know kids. Uh, seeing that as something to rebel and to do uh, versus like it's sort of eliminated the, uh, y you know, the desire to uh, to go in that direction. Like it'd be interesting to see uh, the, the data on that. Yeah, well, but, it but, had, but, cigarette, cigarette purchases have declined in yeah. the last, you know, two decades. Or Absolutely. Whatever. It totally worked with cigarettes, but I don't think it's because I, here's why I think it worked with cigarettes. I think it's because cigarettes got painted as gross. That's what stopped people well, kids what if, from smoking. What if, what if we start painting, hmm. you know, junk food the same way? What if that we start right. to see a lot more education around obesity and eating high sugary content foods like that, and it not being a, what if that's the direction? Well, so here's the thing. Okay, so I'm a health and fitness guy, so I'm I, I I understand what the what they say that they're trying to do. It's not just. I mean. It's it's processed food is the big issue, but then again, if you, I don't trust the people trying to limit it. Mm. Now, the thing with the advertising to kids, I get totally. Like, here's the deal: advertising is powerful. If it wasn't, it wouldn't be a trillion dollar industry worldwide. So, right. I, you know, I, I mean, part of me, the part of me that wants things the way I want, almost feels like banning all advertising to children would be smart. Kids are not; they're not adult. You know, adults they can't you know, make legal purchases or, or excuse me, they can't sign contracts and stuff like that. Mm. So why are we advertising it all to children? You know, that would be that side of me. But then the other side of me is the freedom side, which says you don't raise my kids. I do. The government doesn't raise my kids. It's my job. Mm -hmm. And I've already seen what they do with when, when we give them power to but teach the, your kids about what's right But the right, thing about wrong. this though is that we're not restricting anybody's freedoms. The kids can still go have candy. They can they're not being taxed extra money for it. You are just making more <laughs> barriers. It's I just could, yeah. it's just like having a, a a law in place for an age limit to drink alcohol or cigarettes. It's just like I, I, I like it. I okay. think that it's a, a move in a better direction than we've seen at all from well, any government. I don't, I don't like the regulations either. And I, I that's something I'm always like, I don't know about this in terms of like a, a full-on policy, but, you know, attacking the, the actual marketing of it is different to me than, say, like raising the, the taxes on it. Uh, there's a little bit of a difference. And then I'm thinking about me with my kids, like checking out. And, you know, that's that's like there's a lot of fight there that happens between parents and kids, like because it's all like it's it's surrounding you. And you're like, no, 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 no. Um, and, and I don't know if that, you know, that may help the shopping experience. Think, hey, think about this. I mean, it is a form of advertising the the Snickers bars. OK, the next time you guys are there, pay they're, attention. they're six yeah. inches off the ground. Oh, I know. Yeah. They're, they're not they're made, always grabbing. That them. is not made for you to advertise to you there. I mean, the, the highest one is at your belly button. No, that's true. Yeah, I mean that is that is direct advertising to children in a, in a way. Well, here, let me give you another let me let me point out something interesting about this, right? So they're going to ban it on commercials before 9 p.m. Do you guys remember the last time you see uh, watched a TV commercial? Do you guys remember the last time you saw a broadcast TV No, I'm commercial? all streaming now. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. Are do kids, okay? I got kids. They don't watch TV at all. Everything's YouTube and internet based. They, they get uh, yeah marketed okay, on YouTube, right? All so the time. so how, there's didn't, nothing. Didn't they try? And, I thought that uh, wasn't there something that came out for that about advertising to on kids channels. Well, yeah, there was. Uh, I, I don't know. There was some like sort of restriction as the type of of, of products they were putting through there, but I, I think that was it. Right. So what if that that's the first? This is the first step, right? Is to, that's why it's a slippery slope. I, right. I don't know where it's going to end up. Well, I know, but is it a bad slippery slope? I mean, is it if you if hmm. the next thing, if the, the next person. if the next thing if the next thing happens is they tell YouTube that you can no longer advertise Snickers bars on ch ch children's channels is this not are you anti that uh yeah I don't know I don't know I mean look it's it pull, God, would you take a stance it's somewhere? interesting you know why because yeah, it pull <laughs> it pulls at me for something I believe in I'm a health and fitness uh you know person right so that yeah. it pulls at me there 
But what I, I don't want to be a hypocrite. So I don't want to be a hypocrite and say just because I like that uh, you know law, therefore then it's okay. But if it's for something I don't like, mm. then I'm going to use the argument that they should not infringe on our choices. Right. Um, and our, I so don't, I don't want to be. I, a I hypocrite. don't. I don't think it's infringing on any freedoms here. Like there were not well, it's freedoms of the of the companies to advertise. Right, okay, so just, I guess yeah. But I think that it's just putting in regulations or barriers of of marketing advertising and. The ability that we can, the things that we can do now to to manipulate people and to uh, advertise to them is crazy, and their kids are getting bombarded with that, and it's just making it that much more challenging to for parents to help uh, help them make better choices. I, we'll see what it does. We'll see if it has a positive effect. Because look, here's what happened. I remember when they told well, us. Well, let's that. see what do, what do, what are what do you think are some negative effects that could possibly happen? Oh, the negative effects are we're allowing them now to have more and more control over what we do, what we can and can't do, or see and can't see. Um, the negatives are who gets the power to do that and who are they being influenced by. Look, uh, the other day I was uh, we were at the I don't remember where we were driving, but went to the gas station and I grabbed you know my candy weakness are gummy bears, love gummy bears or gummy worms, right? And I'll have some gummy bears or gummy worms once a month, maybe less than that. And I grab the bag and I always love it because I look at it and it says a fat free food, you know. <laughs> and you know what's funny about that? Now Natural. That, that harkens back to the '90s and early 2000s when we were told that fat was the enemy. How did food manufacturers get around that? They made high sugar foods, and on them they said fat free, and so people are like, "Oh, this is gonna be healthy." What are their guidelines for junk food? How are food manufacturers going to go around that? Mm. And when they do go around that, is that going to solve? Uh, is that going to solve anything at all, or just maybe cause? We don't know what the unintended consequences. Well, of I, are yeah, be. I see where you're going mm. with this, but I, that's also a strategy towards targeted towards adults, which again, I'm okay for. If you're too, st if you're 18 and you're too stupid to to figure that stuff out, then yeah. that's on you, right? That's not towards kids. Kids don't read the label and go like, hey, daddy, this is fat free. Can I have this gummy bear? Like yeah. that doesn't happen. That's for the adults that are easily manipulated to think that, oh, because it's fat free or it's organic gummy bears. Now it's <laughs> Those a good- Those are the ones I get. Right. Now that, yeah. <laughs> now that it's, now it's a healthy choice. Yeah. I, that I'm not uh, against. I, I do think that we are in an interesting time right now with the ability to market to kids so aggressively I know, I know. and to see some sort of barriers put in place to assist parents with helping their kids make healthier, better choices. I'm not opposed to that. And I'm very much so about our I'm freedoms. I'm curious like, to watch it from afar. Yeah. Sure. You see, here's the thing. You, you, all of us in this room are looking at it from our um, perspective in the sense that we are very well informed with food and nutrition, what's healthy, what's not healthy. It's hard to fool us with packaging and labels and, you know, uh, false marketing, marketing. You know, if something says on it, all natural, the average person might be like, oh, this is healthy. I know better, right? I know better. I know what to look for. So do you guys. Here's the thing. I don't know if the people making these rules and laws are going to be like us. And I don't I can't say, in fact, I would bet that they're probably heavily influenced by other lobbies yeah. that are going to make them do certain things. I remember when they passed uh, some law with public schools here where they said that um, a vegetable had to get served with every school meal. And then they went around and classified pizza yeah. sauce. I mean, well, I so what worries me is like this whole movement toward everything being plant-based and that sort of infiltrating this whole thing of like now uh, classifying meat is sort of like a carcinogenic junk food, you know, and like that sort of taking it. Right. So, I, I, so I, you're making a good point right now because it does – here's here's where I, another slippery slope or, or a negative that could happen, right? They they remove the candy bars. Candy bars can't be there, but we approve lean pockets. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, or something that's marketed as if it was a healthy item. But yeah, we, which one hundred percent they're going to do because they're businesses. They'll they'll find angles around all these laws, yeah, right? And, and then and they and then they have their hands, and then someone has their hands. In yes. That, so and they they are making a kickback for it. But I want to see that happen, though. I'm actually curious to see what it does. Yeah, right. I want to take a look and see what happens. And the UK is a decent sized market. Um, not as big as America. It's not even close. But I want to see what happens. And whatever negatives happen there, I can. I would bet that will be way worse in a much larger uh, market uh, like ours. First question is from Jordan Lacey. Should I be changing my lifting tempo every time I phase into a new workout regimen? I, I like this conversation because tempo is one of the most underrated ways of changing a stimulus from lifting weights. Agreed. It's, it's one that nobody looks at. You know, they mm -hmm. look at, 
you know, reps uh, is common. How many sets you do is common. Changing the exercises is common. Um, changing form, less common, but still more common than tempo. I almost hear nobody ever talk about phasing with, with tempo, but I'll tell you something. You do an exercise explosively or you do it slow and controlled. Completely it different. Almost changes Stimulus. the exercise totally, yeah. completely, you know? And it's one thing that I've always gotten uh, results from. I I'll take an exercise and maybe I don't want to phase out of the reps necessarily mm -hmm. <clears throat> or the exercise. So I'll just say to myself, that, you know, today I'm going to squat and instead of, you know, explosively driving up, I'm going to consciously take five seconds to go down and go up feels completely different. So I, I love this idea and I think it's a great strategy. Um, personally, I use it very similar to what we were just talking about in the intro with like hit. And, but the, the way I do it, it's not a time thing on this situation. It's kind of like a mood, how I'm feeling. Right. So some days I'm going into a workout. I'm sure you guys can relate to this and I feel powerful. I was, I'm well fed. I'm well rested. Oh, yeah. powerful. And uh, my, my training has been consistent. And the last few times I've trained, I may have seen, you know, some incre increases consistently. And I'm like, I want to test my power. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to do a more explosive type of lift where it's like a one, one type, one, one, one type of tempo mm -hmm. and just see what, cause I feel good. And then there's other times when I just feel achy and I'm tired. Maybe I'm wore down a little bit and trying to be explosive or lift like max load. I just, I'm not feeling that today. So I'm going to manipulate my tempo and do a very slow, controlled, lighter weight. So I love to use it like also like hit as now, again, this is a you know, experienced lifter understanding how this is a tool in my tool belt and, and, and trying to work it in my everyday life. I think if I'm advising somebody who is learning how to program, learning how to train, this is uh, probably one of the smartest strategies is, you know, pick it, you change your phase. Now you should also change your tempo and pay attention to the results from that. Be consistent with it, measure it. But as you become more and more advanced and understand how to manipulate all these, all these uh, variables, uh, I think this is another great way to day by day pay attention to how you feel mm -hmm. and and utilize this this uh tool differently well this was one thing that i thought was outlined uh somewhat smart in like the nasm and their whole pyramid of uh you know phasing of st the stability phase the strength phase working your way up the ladder towards the power phase and so if you're looking at it just specifically from a tempo perspective I tended to utilize that concept when I would have somebody brand new. We're really slow, and a lot of times I'm just doing isometric exercises so they can really like great point deeply connect uh, and, and feel how they're what you know where their body is in space and like which muscles are actively involved, which ones like need to respond and aren't responding, and so we can really uh, you know take the time to assess what's happening and, and pay attention, graduate them to a different tempo where now we're working a little bit more on strength the rest periods a, a bit longer but now we're actually like mm. you know promoting a little more aggressive you know uh tempo and then working our way up towards this explosive like boom we have to move quickly and, and moving quickly needs a really solid foundation to be applied properly excellent point because uh i want to i want to uh, you know get into that a little deeper uh slow tempo doesn't require as much stability and control as explosive uh, tempo. So mm -hmm. if you are not advanced, or let's say you do an exercise and you have a tough time feeling your target muscles, or you have a tough time really yielding the results you're looking for from a movement. So let's say you do squats and you, and you notice, let's say you're, uh, you're somebody wants to build your butt doing squats, and you're not really hitting the butt, you, you don't feel it in the glutes, it's not really responding. You're better off going slow and connecting than you are going explosive and fast. So there is a totally different feel, and the prerequisites are different. And I will say this, when I would train clients, uh, more often than not, not all the time, but more often than not, I would focus more on a slower controlled tempo because it just doesn't require nearly as much skill and control. No, mm -hmm. I, I, Justin, that's a great point. And th that's where like who we're talking to matters how I, right. I advise. Yeah, absolutely. The questions being asked, would I tr change? I think that's a great, uh, you know, just straight up for most people, that's a good strategy. You move into a new phase, you change the tempo along with whatever exercises or rep range that you're changing. I think that's a smart, that's a smart idea. But to Justin's point, how I coach clients, very similar 
most people, I did not mess with uh, explosive type tempos until way later in their training. Until we've been training for a long time, they have very good body control mm -hmm. and they have very good form and technique. Now we can play with that more regularly because they have that type of control and understanding of what we're trying to accomplish. More risk and also, you know, more reward. At that point, you've built the foundation of it. So yeah, your body really responds uh, during the power phase and you get a lot of the benefits from it, but you just got to make sure that, you know, you don't do any damage leading up to yeah, it. Yeah. Before you can go fast, you've got to be able to do it perfectly going slow. That's what I would say. Next question is from Strong with Jamie. Should I do cardio before or after my lifts? Yeah, this this I get this question all the time. Okay, it depends what you want. Right. Um, there's only one kind of person I would say that should do cardio before the lifts, and that's somebody who is prioritizing endurance mm -hmm. and stamina. If you're somebody prioritizing endurance and stamina, do your cardio first. Everybody else will benefit from doing cardio after, even people who want to maximize calorie burn. Because here's the thing. When you compare on a time-for-time -time basis, 30 minutes of cardio to 30 minutes of resistance training, cardio does burn more calories in the moment. But the reason why resistance training still wins is because resistance training uh, gets the body to adapt in a more favorable way for fat loss by speeding up your metabolism. So if we go back and we look at somebody who wants to burn body fat and they do the cardio first when they have the most energy, therefore they, ex they put out the most you know, energy while they're doing their cardio and then they lift weights after – they may burn more calories in that workout than if they did the weights first when they had the most energy and then did cardio at the end when they had the least amount of energy. So somebody wanting to burn body fat would say, oh, well, that's case closed. I'll do cardio in the beginning. I end up burning calories, more calories. Okay, you got to look at the big picture again. Then it hinders your lifting. It does. Mm -hmm. The lifting is what speeds up the metabolism and sets you up for long-term fat loss. It sends a more favorable long-term signal to maintain a lean physique. So even then, cardio should be done at the end of the workout. Only if you want endurance um, should you do cardio in the beginning. I don't disagree. I mean, yeah. that, that's exactly the same advice that I give. You, you have to understand that when, and there's another thing too, is that uh, weights require so much uh, awareness and uh, body control when, you, when you're doing it. And to get the max benefits, you want m as much energy as you possibly can. You want as much focus as you possibly can. To get on a treadmill, okay, like a hamster, does not take a lot of effort to get the benefits of, of burning fat or burning calories. So prioritizing it after the workout, I think, is beneficial for most everybody except for that exact mm -hmm. person that you recommend. If you came to me and we are trying to increase our mile time, I'm trying to train for a marathon, and my main priority is building my endurance, getting good at cardio, uh, or getting good at you know doing whatever equipment, running or Stairmaster or whatever it is, rowing, whatever it is that you're deciding to do for your cardio, you're trying to get good at that. That makes sense to do before everybody else if you're doing it at all, it should be post-workout. Yeah, there's also the myth that still persists that, you know, you're, you're, you're basically warming up the body by doing cardio before you get into the workout, which, you know, makes the blood flow, like creates more elasticity of the muscles, like all this kind of stuff where, uh, this is where we really tried to attack that with our, uh, prime and our prime program, uh, to, to show people how to actually set their body up and to, uh, to activate certain muscles, to set your body in positions. So that way you have that advantage going into these comp pound lifts where you get the support system, the stability, uh, but not necessarily, we're not going for this overall uh, uh, body approach of, of cardiovascular warm-up. Yeah, a, a little bit of cardio before you work out is better than nothing for a warm-up, but it's way, way, way less effective than priming. Priming is the way you should warm up, if that's the goal. If the goal is to warm up, prime, don't do cardio. Uh, if you don't know any better, and your option is to go lift cold or do five minutes uh, or 10 minutes on a cardio machine, then yeah, it's a little bit better. Next question is from Martial Arts 44 I'm bulking right now. Should I worry about getting my vegetables in during meals while trying to meet a higher caloric intake or just focus on the meat and potatoes? Mm -hmm. Aren't potatoes, uh, potatoes vegetables too? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know that doesn't count here. Um, so here's the thing. Let's start with essential and move down, okay? What is essential? Um, fats, proteins, 
And then if bulking calories are essential, you can't, you're not going to bulk or build if you don't have adequate calories. One of the challenges with bulking, especially if you have a fast metabolism, so I'm speaking from a position of like, I had a very fast metabolism. I know Adam can identify with this as well. You have to prioritize the the calories first because otherwise it ain't going to happen. Mm-hmm. If I eat the vegetables first, it, it was it was hard enough getting enough calories when I wasn't focusing on the vegetables, let alone eating the vegetables first. Now, here's where that can hurt you. If you start to have digestive issues or you get constipated it because fills you're not, you up a lot. Yeah, and you're not eating enough you know, uh, fiber from vegetables, then you're not going to bulk well either because when your digestion is off, good luck trying to eat enough calories, mm-hmm. in which case I say, listen to your body. But you know, here's the thing. You could go the rest of your life without eating uh, vegetables. You can't go the rest of your life without eating proteins and fats. So those are the essential things that probably should be focused on first. I think we, we've, 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 it's been hammered in our heads that vegetables are, are good for oh, us I know. to the point where we think, and they are, I'm not saying they're bad. I do, they do have health benefits, but now it's gotten to the point where people think that they, that is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. It's actually not, uh, you know, if you well, don't get- Well, that's a very in, common thought if you talk to people these days, like the most, the, the, they prioritize that food group over anything else right now because of all the information that they're getting bombarded yeah, and, with. And for the average person that needs to eat less uh, yeah. because they eat too many calories- Kind of makes sense, but again, protein and fats are essential. They're essential. If you don't eat enough of those, literally, and I'm I'm going extreme here, but if you really don't eat enough of them, your body will fail to thrive. Now that being said, here's an example where I I love using things like supplements. Okay, here's where like the Organifi green juice is is valuable to me for somebody who, if I had a client who's saying that like Adam, when I, you know I know you're telling me that I should get all these vegetables in addition to all these, I'm having a hard time. I'm filling up like crazy when I have a big bowl of broccoli or have a bunch of asparagus. Uh, but I, I understand the benefits of getting those micronutrients and extra fiber, and like I know I want to do that, but it's 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 getting in the way of me hitting my targets calorie wise. Then, then don't, and then this is where I would supplement someone and drink that. You still get the benefits of those micronutrients that you'd be getting from eating all those vegetables, and drinking those calories is a lot easier. So I might have a client like this who is struggling to hit the calorie intake because they're filling up on green so much, and that might be someone that I utilize this. So mm-hmm. that's a, a decent strategy so you don't feel like you're missing out on a lot of those micronutrients, and then you're also not feeling like you're filling up because you can't quite get the calories. Totally, totally. But again, if your lack of vegetable intake is causing you, you know, let, let's say you're, you're a hard gainer and you're, you know, you need to eat 3,500 calories a day, which is uh, not unheard of. In fact, I used to have to eat more than that to put on weight. Uh, but let's say you had to eat 3,500 calories a day. That on an everyday basis is, can be a bit of a chore. Now, I know people listening right now who have problem with, with weight gain and they want to lose weight. You're probably, you know, you're, you're look, your your eyebrows probably lifting, and you're thinking that this is ridiculous. I wish I had that problem, but it really is an issue for someone who's trying to bulk who has a fast metabolism. It's a pain in the butt to eat 3,500 calories, for example, every single day. You start to feel like you're force feeding yourself. If your digestion is off, you're screwed. Mm. If you get bloated or you're constipated, now you're now you don't want to eat. It's like you you can't force yourself to eat more the the amount of calories that you need to eat, and that can happen sometimes with lack of vegetables. I've had clients like this where, you know, they had to eat a lot of calories because they were trying to gain, and their digestion was off, and then they were screwed. So we added vegetables to improve motility and digestion, and voila, they were able to eat more. So at the end of the day, you got to listen to your body as well. So if you find that you know prioritizing you know meat and potatoes is actually hurting you because your digestion's off because you're not eating enough vegetables, then eat some vegetables first. Next question is from Pamber is Great. What do you feel was your best traits that gave you the most success in personal training? Yeah, I love this one because we're all a little different. Yeah, All of us are a little different, and I could say that all of us were uh, successful uh, personal trainers. Um, I can, I'm going to speak personally, and then I think I'll talk about what I think the general... <clears throat> what makes trainers across the board uh, successful. Um, but the, the, for me personally, I really enjoy uh, communicating with people. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I also genuinely love people. I find people fascinating. I love talking and discussing and watching and listening people. I think they're the most fascinating thing in the world. Uh, I, I, and so personal training for me was so fun because I would train, you know, six to eight, sometimes 10 different people 
a day and I would ask them questions about their jobs and their families and their opinions and we would get in wonderful discussions and debates and it was so stimulating for me and I think that they found it enjoyable as well and that was a great trait because most people, here's the hard truth, most people don't genuinely find exercise enjoyable like I do or like you know Adam or Justin do. Like I love just the working out. I just love the way it feels. Even if it didn't give me any, any strength or calorie burn or whatever, I would do it anyway. I just love the way it feels. Most people don't find it you know inherently enjoyable. They don't necessarily like the pain. They kind of learn to respect it and enjoy it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But they the clients would show up, um, and I know this. They would tell me. Oftentimes they'd show up because they loved hanging out with me while I trained them. And we'd have these, so I knew that that was a trait that that helped me a lot because when people were thinking to themselves, oh, I don't want to go to the gym, but you yeah. know, I like I like seeing Sal, so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go show up. Yeah, it was definitely a personality thing for me on some level, uh, just being able to connect with with people on a deep level, but also to make it fun and enjoyable experience for them. That was something that I definitely leaned heavy on, but also my journey specifically, I would always try to relate with each one of my clients in terms of what I was struggling with, with my kids, with my wife, like whatever was going on in my life. There's a lot of parallels that people share. And that was always something I was trying to find that opportunity to, you know, at least like paint the picture of like how I was tackling a lot of these issues or problems going on with me personally, but also my journey of learning and uh, going off and, and learning new concepts and uh, uh, basically like going into these like certifications and then bringing back uh, materials and idea and testing them on them, getting their feedback. They love to be involved with my learning curve and my learning journey uh, and and they reap the benefits of that. And so then we'd, we'd find ones that had uh, you know, relevance uh, with them personally. And I could, I could really tailor in uh, these workouts then based off of like, they come in how they feel, they, they tell me how they feel, like what's going on with their body. And I would adjust everything uh, specifically with them based off of our communication. So that was, I mean, those two things, just, you know, making it an enjoyable experience. And also like uh, that they knew that I was always like trying to get better. I think that even though Sal mentioned that we're all so different, there's there's a, a common theme here uh, for sure with all of us. Like uh, I, two two traits come into mind uh, for me, and and one of them I think that's very similar to you guys is that you know as a kid growing up, I remember um, you know I I had a, a a lot of different friends. I and I and I, of all my my really really close friends, I was the only one that kind of like hung out with all the different groups. Like I had mm -hmm. people that you would just not think that were in, that were part of my clique or that were like me that I was friends with. I was, I had this ability to be a chameleon. I could be in different settings and with different types of people and get along with them and appreciate them. And I liked them. And a lot of this, I just, I liked people. I liked meeting new people. I found them interesting. Even if we had polar opposite political views and religious views and thoughts on life and philosophy. Like I, I was interested. I was genuinely interested in, in people like that. And that, and it, that started at a young age for me and it served me well in personal training. So I think that, uh, that was a big one. The other thing that I think really served me as a personal trainer was I was able to understand really complex ideas and communicate that in layman's terms. I was able to read the studies. I was able to read all the all the the nutrition uh, information that we were getting bombarded with. I was able to to take that, and then I could communicate that to my clients in much simpler concepts that they could take and then apply into their life. And you know, early on, I didn't know a lot. I didn't have a lot of information. I wasn't extremely well read in my early twenties when I first started personal training, so I didn't have a ton of these super complex concepts, but what I was good at, it was taking the one or two things that I did learn and disseminating that down to the most valuable information that I could provide for my clients and getting them to apply it in their life. Those two things probably serve me the most at being successful. Yeah. In so, you know, we've all worked with a lot of trainers. Um, you know, I, I don't know how many I've worked with, but I've worked with quite a few. And then out of those people I've worked with, I've worked with some that were very successful. There was one commonality among all of the successful ones uh, besides a passion for people and fitness. I think that's 
automatic prerequisite. You got to have a passion for people and for fitness. You just won't last. Uh, personal training, you'll you'll hate it. If you don't like people, you'll hate it. Believe me, you, you got to work. Yeah. You know, most eight hour a day jobs give you the break to be by yourself or you know have some quiet time. You're training eight clients a day. You're on all the whole time. You're on all eight hours, and it's different people. And if you don't love people. You'll get annoyed real quick. I've seen it happen a ton of times. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you got to love people and love fitness. So that's a prerequisite. But there's one thing that I saw that all successful trainers had, whether they were loud and charismatic or quiet and, and consistent and you know functional focused or strength focused or male or female, doesn't matter. There's one thing that they all, all the successful trainers had in common, and that was were they truly influential? Okay, were they truly influential? to their clients? Were they able to communicate effectively on a regular basis to the person? Because consider what you're trying to do as a personal trainer. You're not just trying to train them when they come see you. You, you know, if they train, if they see you three days a week, that's three hours out of the entire week. I don't know how many hours there are uh, in a week, but there's a lot. And if they just saw you for an hour, three times a week, and then did nothing else and changed nothing else, you're not really successful. And then if you ever stop training them for whatever reason, and then they go back to doing what they were doing before completely, you failed. You failed as a trainer. So the successful successful ones were the ones that got good clients, got a lot of clients, but also the ones that caused their clients to change fundamental things about their behaviors, how they ate, how they were active, how they viewed their bodies. And let me tell you what that takes. That takes effective, consistent influential communication. You are literally a salesperson the entire time you're training your client. I don't mean selling them like products and personal training. I mean selling them concepts and ideas and how you can get them to understand what they need to do and also buy in to what they need. Because you're telling somebody who's eaten a particular way for their whole life. And by the way, the way you eat is a big part of who you are. You're telling them to change a part of who they are forever. You know how hard that is? Mm -hmm. That takes... And that, it takes years of effective communication, not one session, but rather years of doing this. And it took me a long time to be able to get really good at that to the point where I saw people get permanent results. So all the successful trainers that I know, whether, and it, it, you know, it, again, you look at uh, Adam, Justin, and myself, and if you saw us in gyms, you'd see some differences. And, you know, Justin's very different than I am in, in terms of how we present ourselves, but he was extremely successful. He was also very effective at getting, at being influential with our, with his clients. So that's the I would say the number one thing uh, that you should focus on if you want to be a successful uh, trainer. And look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. So uh, what's up, everybody on YouTube? Mind Pump Podcast. Come check us out. You can also find us on Instagram. Uh, Justin's at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. Adam's at Mind Pump Adam. And then if you heard us talk about the Hard Gainer Building Muscle webinar that's going to be uh, live August 3rd, but there, will be, there should be some replays, but show up live. We'll answer your questions sign up at hardgainerwebinar.com. There's no limit. So sign up and watch with friends, get other people to sign up. We'll see you guys there. I mean, pretty much everything else uh, that I can think of off the top of my head is, is a straightforward, just switch it to dumbbells. Like yeah. I said, presses, rows, you know, that, all that stuff. But like barbell squats, how do I transfer barbell squats to dumbbells? Well, I think the best way you can do it is exactly what Adam and Justin are saying, which is don't put the...